right. Good afternoon, everyone. How's Dreamforce? Everybody ready to go home? <laughs> <laughs> or a couple more sessions, right? Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, really excited to kind of talk about driving personalization, personalized healthcare experience with Health Cloud. Um, but before we get started, you've seen this slide before. All right. Uh, Salesforce is a public traded company. Uh, uh, customers and potential buyers, please purchase, uh, please make your decisions based on available product. If you have any questions, please reach out to Salesforce or visit salesforce.com. All right, so um, we are Health Cloud and Salesforce Implementer. Uh, my name is Eric Montalbano with PwC. I am a technical architect delivering Salesforce for the last 13 years and mainly in the healthcare space in the last five years. Um, today we'll talk about how um, some of our lessons learned and implementation, implementation of Health Cloud. Um, and with me today is Kyle and Nathan. Absolutely, hi everyone, Kyle Porterfield, uh, also with PwC. I've been implementing Salesforce for about four years now, starting with sales and service and really Health Cloud in the past couple years. I have amazingly survived working on several projects uh, with Eric, and I think we're really excited to share a lot of those learnings specific to Health Cloud with you guys today. Nathan? Yeah, um, hi, Nathan Hillis, also with PwC. Um, I used to not have a beard. Um, <coughs> <laughs> um, usually serve as the lead developer on projects with both of these guys as well. Um, and happy to share what we know with you guys. Right. Um, we do have some guest speakers today. As you can see, we have Max the, um, uh, Mulesoft from, uh, from Mulesoft. We have several Yeti Astros, Baby Yeti and Baby Astros, and we have Big um, Yeti over here. They'll, they'll play a role in our conversation today of how to drive personalization, personalization in healthcare, especially for Papa Astro over here. Right? <laughs> um, let's, let's get started. So, so as you, all, as you all are aware, um, especially from yesterday's keynote with Dr. Ash and, and team, uh, healthcare is, is, is evolving, right? Uh, healthcare industry drives to create a more personalized experience for the consumers. Um, very similar to what we've seen with retail, technology, and entertainment industries. So with that, we really want to focus on the, the platform that's evolving in healthcare, and that would be Salesforce Health Cloud. Um, but before, uh, but before we go through the rest, I want to kind of tell you the journey that we're going to go through for the day. So you will learn a lot of how to increase and personalize the patient experience with Health Cloud, understand the real world application of Health Clouds, whether it's integrating with EMRs or external systems, and recognize these different integration patterns and the architecture. And of course, understand what type of data should be stored in Health Cloud. As you're all aware, patient HIPAA is a very, very strict policy. You have to make sure you understand that. So if you guys are not complying with HIPAA, don't touch Health Cloud. <laughs> but um, as, as we go through this motions, um, I would like to introduce our colleague, Caitlin. And to, to better do that is Kyle, want to introduce Caitlin? I would love to. Uh, Caitlin is actually in the room here with us as well in one of the first few rows. So thanks, Caitlin, for coming. Uh, but as Eric mentioned, right, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is driving a personalized experience with Health Cloud. And one of the things that we heard last night that really resonated with me from the Health and Life Sciences keynote is we are going for customer centric and patient driven. That's where healthcare is going. And what better way to tell that story of how Health Cloud can enable that than to tell it through Caitlin? Now, Caitlin is a young professional who lives in Los Angeles, and she's very active. She likes running and cycling and going on hikes with her dog, Sophie, who we all know and love. Um, unfortunately, last year, Caitlin, uh, while hiking, suffered a knee injury. She actually tore her ACL, and that is where her healthcare journey really started. And you can kind of see the path that she's been on for the past year. A typical week for Caitlin in today's healthcare experience means that she is making repetitive calls to her provider's call center. She is repeatedly providing the same information to the call center agents about when she wants to be scheduled, the doctors that she's seen before, um, any of her relevant medical information. And over the course of those appointments, all Caitlin really wants is to feel known to feel like she's not just being treated as another patient or as a transaction, but she's being treated as Caitlin. So when we think about that and how we wanna enable it within Health Cloud to give Caitlin what she's looking for, 
we broke it down into three key capabilities or functions that we wanted to enable. And later on in the session, we're gonna go through a demonstration of how all these can come to life within Health Cloud, as well as talk to you about the architectural uh, data management and integration implications that you need to be able to enable these. But first, let me talk a little bit more about them. Understand me as an individual. One of the things that is happening in healthcare right now is capturing information about patients both on and off the chart. And I say off the chart because that's really where we're transforming. We're not only picking up uh, recent appointments that Caitlin has had and visits to her doctor, but we're also gonna start to pick up things like her preferred engagement channels, the days that she can actually schedule appointments because maybe she travels for work, maybe she has children and can only schedule appointments in the afternoon after school. Those are things that make her feel like we really understand her and are treating her like an individual. Provide me efficient service. So you'll remember I mentioned that a typical week for Caitlin involves her calling into the call center and providing repetitive information about uh, the doctors that she needs to see and the information that the agents actually need to be able to schedule for her. With Health Cloud, we can store all that information and present it to our contacts and our agents to be able to readily, uh, to be able to have it readily available so they can actually provide the most efficient service and spend less time looking information up and spend more time providing an empathetic experience for Caitlin and uh, as efficient as possible. And then finally, help me manage my health. I think this is one of the really interesting pieces where Health Cloud is going to interact with Marketing Cloud as well. So when you think about your current healthcare experience, it's, it's really on all of us and on Caitlin to understand when she needs to schedule her next appointment. When should she go get a flu shot? When are all those things that she needs to do to manage her own health? With Salesforce Health Cloud, we can actually help Caitlin do that. We can make her feel like she's not alone in her healthcare journey and that she has us and her provider on her team proactively reaching out to her to uh, help her manage her own health. Now, to talk a little bit about how we can actually enable these capabilities within Health Cloud, I'm gonna pass over to Eric, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the architecture that we need to set up for both Salesforce Health Cloud and the rest of the ecosystem. Thanks, Kyle. So, um, hopefully the next slide is not as scary as you guys might think on the healthcare architecture, right? So, here it is. Wait, come on. There it is. All right. So what is this? Uh, it, it, this is a very, very simplified health uh, architecture that we've seen um, as part of our common um, trends that we've seen in the last probably a couple of years, especially with Health Cloud. Right? Very, very simple. Um, as you all know, the Health Cloud uh, healthcare system is very complex. There's multiple systems involved, but we're trying to make it simplified for this version, um, for, this, for this session. Uh, so what are we looking at? So what are we looking at here? So today, we are actually gonna show a couple of things as part of a demo. Um, Salesforce Health Cloud is your core foundation. This will be uh, the data that will be coming from your CRM, your core CRM, that is only in CRM, as well as data coming in from uh, your EMR systems. So this will be your driver for that personalization, the Salesforce Health Cloud. Next is Twilio. So if you are, if you have a contact center, if, you, if you're, if you're Provider is very, very huge, similar to uh, Langone, or NYU Langone, or other, um, uh, other providers. You might have a uh, CTI or a telephone systems, whether it's Twilio, Avaya, or uh, Genesis. So this is going to be your key integration between Health Cloud and um, that phone system to really get to understand who is calling. Next is Marketing Cloud. So Marketing Cloud is a, another way to segment your data, to understand that personalization. To, over, to be able to uh, send health and wellness tips, to really engage, that, um, engage Caitlin. So we're using Marketing Cloud to not just send an email reminder, but also send a point, um, um, sorry, an email confirmation about their appointments, but also an appointment reminders through either mobile studio or text. So that's a great way to do it. But there's another use case. So if you are a, a new mom, Right? How do you provide services? How do you provide education and tr um, training tips for a new parent? So we, ha we have to segment that through Health Cloud and it will be sent through uh, Marketing Cloud. Next are on the bottom here, which are the community clouds. These are your portal for the Salesforce. Each EMR systems may have their own specific portal, but we also know that there might be some 
portal, portals that are not, I would say, pleasing. They don't look pleasing. So um, you may want to skin that. So you might want to have that um, customized portal within the Salesforce or another platform. So we just had a physician portal or a patient portal. Physician portal is a good way to also allow your agents or uh, front office staff um, in the headquarters to communicate with your physicians. How many here has worked with physicians? Raise your hand. All right. um, how many here um, understand that the physicians like to control their scheduling every week? Oh, all right. So there are some physicians who only like to do physical uh, physical um, exams on Monday, Tuesday. There might be some other physicians who during uh, winter times only work Monday to Thursdays. So how do you communicate that? So that might be a, another way to not only uh, use for the portal, but also allow that preference for the physician that will show up for the patients. And we'll show that in, in later today in the, in the demo. Next is the patient portal here. Um, can somebody raise their hand if they've ever worked with an EMR? Have you guys seen um, some of the fancy EMR um, out of the box portal? Right, some, some are not pleasing. Some are very basic. Some are, feel like you're still in the legacy system in the old world in the 90s or the 2000s. Um, but really, that is another way. H how do you integrate some of that data uh, or that some of the uh, aspects of the functionalities from the EMR and bring it to life to make it more uh, pleasing for Caitlin and kind of have that millennial status of here, I have, I have an app, I can, I can schedule my appointment right on the go. So that's probably another way to look at it. Um, although I, I, I want to say this, um, we are not telling you or recommending you to get away from it. You, you still need those portals in the back end, especially if it's Epic or Cerner, they, they have their own portals you're gonna extend it. So you're gonna extend that functionality. Um, <clears throat> so just another way to look at it. Next here we have um, MuleSoft on the right side. This is where it gets really, really complex. Right, like our, was it left? Yo, you're right. Um, MuleSoft is another, an, is one of the um, middleware that you, you need to think about. So middleware is not just something that you, you kind of think last. It's something that you really need to think up front, when you, especially with implementing with Health Cloud. Why? Because there's so many transactions that happens, you don't want to do point to point. So you want to reduce that. So you, whether it's um, working with Max um, for MuleSoft or you're, it's working with other uh, middleware such as uh, uh, Cloverleaf or uh, Informatica or Boomi, you need to understand that it's really, really important to have that. We learned the hard way um, and we, we, we literally learned the hard way <laughs> where we didn't have a middleware when we implemented a health cloud implementation recently. And it was a struggle, right? It was a very, very challenge. It took us longer than we would expect. And a lot of the, stu a lot of the stuff that we wanted to do, took, um, it, it took a step back. So we, ha we had to kind of think through the architecture over and over again to make sure nothing breaks, not from just the EMR system, but also from um, health cloud. Um, anyone here uses Epic, Cerner, other EMR systems, both? So we have clients who actually does both, Epic and Cerner. We also have clients that has only one. Some other clients are not Epic, Cerner. But you really want to kind of make sure that your architecture fits, whether it's an Epic, Cerner, or other. So you just want to just keep in mind. Um, what about a data warehouse? Anyone has a data warehouse that they have right now connected to a CRM or external systems? Right. All right. So we'll talk more about the importance of the data warehouse. So this is just a simplified architecture, right? And there are many, really, really many. So um, making it easier for you guys to kind of see right now. So as we look through the journey, um, how do we enable the connections between your EMRs, external systems, all the marketing cloud, and what's the importance? What are the integration options that are available? Uh, we have Health Level 7, uh, which is HL7. It really is a event-based action from a real time. It's triggered from an EMR, right? So it's, it's triggered from an EMR. But when it comes to brokering that HL7 from your EMR system into Salesforce, 
the big gotcha here is you need a HL7 broker, whether it's Cloverleaf, MuleSoft, or Rhapsody. You need that a wrapper because unfortunately, the Salesforce does not allow a, um, Salesforce does not accept anything from a proxy or a port because it's in the cloud, it's not on-prem. So you have to kind of identify you need that middleware. Like I showed earlier in the, in the architecture, that HL7 will need to pass through a middleware, whether it's Cloverleaf, MuleSoft, or Rhapsody. Next is Fire. Fire is more is a REST-based API. It's quicker, it's lighter, but it's based on a, a uh, it, it's based on an initiated request. Somebody sends a uh, data, you get a you get a response. It's initiated. Compared to HL7, HL7 is triggered from your EMR, but from Fire, it's it's somebody's doing an action in in a system. Now be very very careful on Fire. Depending on what EMR system you have and what version, you may not have all the APIs. So you might have an EMR with an older version that only accepts um, DTSU2 from Fire versus an R4. So not all APIs are available for each EMR and you have to really work with your uh, EMR uh, providers, right? Bulk API and batch. This is one another thing that we, we like working a lot with because they don't have to be in real time. We identified the data that doesn't, that isn't, that's not as critical as the HL7 or Fire. Um, so it's asynchronous. So it's, you could do it daily, weekly, monthly. And the only difference here is the lag time. So a good way is how often um, are you bringing in provider data from your EMR system into Salesforce? Does it have to be in real time? I don't think so. It could be daily or weekly because there's still credentializ credentializations during that process, so you can wait a little bit. Compared to HL7, where you need patient registration from the urgent care and you need to receive that patient data, then use HL7. Or if you need to um, do a search query in Salesforce uh, for a patient that's not available in Salesforce yet, use Fire. So those are kind of the big three things. Now, the last two here are more of the connectors. Um, anybody heard of Lightning Connect before? So not a lot of folks. So Lightning Connect is probably the underdog in, in, in the health cloud space um, because not a lot of folks knows that it syncs with your uh, EDW that is OData capable, right? It requires an OData connection and it's close to real time, actually not close to real time, almost every 15 minutes. The big ups is the data is not persisted in Salesforce, meaning you could view the data that's available in your data warehouse, but you don't have to worry about the data space in, in, in Salesforce. So if you have EHR encounters, maybe, and there's millions and millions of rows, guess what? Do you want that in all in, in Salesforce? Or do you just want to view it when your agents or your users need it in, 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 that, in that time? So you don't have to worry about the data persistency. Now, Marketing Cloud Connect is another great tool to send your data as part of your segmentation to Marketing Cloud. So that's really, really key. Right? Now, my favorite question that we received so many times, hey, Eric, um, actually, Astro asked us that the other day, what integration options should we use? I'm like, hmm. I was like, don't settle for one, right? Don't settle for one integration. Leverage multiple integration to be successful. Mm -hmm. like, we cannot emphasize that enough because I said HL7 has some limitations, Fire has some limitations. Why don't you combine both? Why don't you use both? You'll be successful that way. It depends on your use case. So really, even Einstein said it, like, hey, don't, don't settle for one, okay? You can, you can um, vouch for Einstein. He's a smart dude. <laughs> um, so the next topic here, what we're talking about is patient data. This is really a very critical piece when we talk about patient healthcare. Um, and I'm gonna hand it off to Kyle and Nathan because they live through this the, for about six months on just patient data alone. So Nathan and Kyle, That's can fine. you talk to us with the people, process, and technology for data management? I'd love to. So I'm gonna touch on the people aspect and then I'll pass it off to Nathan to hit on the process and technology. Um, and to me, and Nathan may disagree, but the, the people point here may be the most important that we have on the slide. And the idea is that 
to make transformation happen, you need a lot of different skill sets, right? Most of us come from a Salesforce background, maybe some of us have a medical background, and maybe even fewer of us have an EHR background. Um, through our implementations, when we started working with Health Cloud, we didn't know EHR data um, architectures. So we didn't understand the relationships between an appointment and an encounter, and when an encounter was created, when an appointment was created, or the dependency on each other. And for us, this caused a lot of heartburn. So what we found was that engaging with clinical applications or essentially the product owners of those EMR systems, what you're able to do is get with those experts, have them explain the data structures within EMR in a way that allows you to uh, translate something that is very, very detailed and complex into something that is uh, simpler and something that your end users, like a contact center agent who doesn't have a medical background, would be able to understand. So really cannot stress this enough, is getting those folks involved early and often, making sure you have the right people at the table so they can provide that expertise. Now for process and technology, Nathan, do you wanna take us through? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say one thing with the people portion before I move on to other things. Um, <clears throat> I would say that none of us are experts on any EMR yet anyway and every place that we go will be different. And so you're gonna have to do this regardless at every single point that you wanna integrate with one because everyone does things a little bit differently, mm -hmm. especially in EMRs that they weren't necessarily thinking about integration when they made some, some modifications. <coughs> um, but we can move on to process. Um, in terms of process, um, let's make sure that we actually consider each point of data and the frequency at which we need that piece of data. I think Eric mentioned a couple points earlier in terms of like what we might need, you know, not as often. Um, for instance, like provider data, whereas an update to a patient might be very important to where, I, I don't know, if they potentially you needed to send a notification to them, but something something happened, you wouldn't necessarily want that notification to fire in case of those, those type of situations. Um, the second thing is make sure you dry run all your data loads. Um, you can plan as much as you want, but you'll never actually know what will happen until you actually run a full dry run. I think in a couple of situations that we've had, we have loaded millions and millions of rows, and you just won't know everything that will happen until you see it happen. Um, in terms of the actual sequence, I think that's kind of similar. Um, you, you wanna make sure that things load in the correct order to make sure that any dependencies are actually taken care of, as well as you can um, determine if any sort of data locks happen within Salesforce, mm -hmm. um, which is a surprisingly common problem depending on how you've set up your data. From a technology perspective, uh, we wanna make sure that we avoid storing or pulling any data that's not useful. So make sure that you actually consider the business case that each um, component has and make sure that you're only applying um, data where necessary. Um, Eric's mentioned it as well, but HIPAA is very, very important here. So any patient data that we actually pull, let's make sure that we have, have shield encryption on that. Um, and obviously in terms of Salesforce, obviously there are a lot of, of limitations, especially in terms of data size. Uh, we can leverage Lightning Connect and external objects to make sure that we don't um, run into those type of situations where possible. So I think right now, I think demo is next, correct? I don't know. I think, I think it's time to make a call. It might be. Yeah. So wait, um, who's calling, by the way? Do we know who's calling? Uh, well, Caitlin is actually going to be giving us a call. Um, I believe that she needs to schedule a physical therapy appointment. I have a little bit of clairvoyance that would tell me that that's actually what's gonna happen here. Um, also, Nathan, is any, any, is, who's the agent that's gonna help be helping you dry run this demo? Oh, that's right, Astro will be. All right. oh. well, you wanna just hold on to Astro and while you see how this works? All right. He'll sit here with me. So, so guys, so uh, this is actually a real live demo, so there's no um, kind of like screenshot. This is actually a real um, demo that we built from an end-to-end -end from a call center all the way to scheduling into EMR, right? So this is actually, um, a great live and how do you really kind of use Salesforce Health Cloud and kind of see it in action. Right? All right, so let's see if uh, Caitlin's calling. All right, let's place a call. 
How can we direct your call? Press one for scheduling. Press two for nurse on call. Press three. I'm going to press one for reason. scheduling. You mean Caitlin? Caitlin's pressing. Caitlin is going to press one for scheduling. That's true. No match bomb in. Oh, uh oh. How can we direct your call? Press one again. Oh, why? Did, did Caitlin hang up? Caitlin hung up. Poor experience already. The technology didn't work. Sorry. Press one for scheduling. Press two for nurse on call. Cool. So at this point, we're actually going to be able, our Astro is actually going to be able to accept this call um, from Twilio. And at this point, we'll actually see um, a, a sort of screen pop here that tells us immediately um, that, that Caitlin is the one that called. She's actually calling for scheduling. And then we can actually verify her information live. One of the key differentiators here, and when we think back to our Caitlin story, one of her frustrations was every time she calls in, she is treated like just a phone number, just another transaction. So if you think about the way that uh, your call center agents are answering the phone now, you're essentially requesting their first name, last name, all their information. What we can do here, we're still gonna have to validate Caitlin, but we can answer the phone and say, hi, is this Caitlin speaking? Right, that makes Caitlin feel known. It's something as simple as we have her phone number, right? This is something that's stored and, and healthcare, in particular contact centers, don't have this yet, but Health Cloud is bringing it to them. Hey, um, Nathan and Kyle, what does the routed to mean? Or what does that do? The routed to number, I believe that's the actually showing you which number Caitlin called. That way you can determine if she's calling from a, like for a specific clinic rather than just like a contact center in general and can answer the phone accordingly. So Nathan, now that um, we've opened the phone call, we've asked if this is Caitlin speaking, she said it is. We would need to validate uh, some personal information of hers, her phone number, date of birth, social security number if we stored it here. But uh, you know, in the safety of Caitlin's identity, we'll not put that in there for now. Uh, what we can do, Nathan, is we can actually select, or Astro can select, that it's Caitlin calling. Yep. And then what's he gonna do next? At that point, he'll actually navigate to her patient record within Salesforce, which hmm. would be here. Um, immediately, you'll see a couple things. Um, we have all the important information to know about Caitlin up in the left um, corner, along with special accommodations for her. Um, this is very important to see immediately and right off, like right off the bat to know if um, Caitlin would need any sort of special assistance when she goes to her specific appointment. Um, a couple other things that you can see from this tab as well. Um, we have any of the most recent interactions that Caitlin has had with um, our um, hospital, as well as any sort of reminders or next best actions um, that she could take, for instance, a flu shot for this coming season. So Nathan, for, for the patient interactions, mm -hmm. um, does that capture all the text message, the appointment reminders, the emails that was sent, maybe even different uh, patient campaigns? Yes, this, this would integrate with Marketing Cloud and actually tell you every single time that we've had any sort of communication with Caitlin. So Nathan, before we, before Astro moves on, I wanna highlight a couple pieces that we talked about at the beginning with our Caitlin story. So we outlined three pieces of functionality that we wanted to bring to Caitlin so she could feel like she was having a personalized experience. The first one was understand me as an individual. And the components of this that allow us to do that are a patient card, so we have all of her core demographics. We also have all of her on the chart information, her medical information. So as uh, Nathan and Eric mentioned, the patient interactions here would also include any appointments that she's had. Nathan, do you wanna show us in the related list where we can capture um, EMR data for appointments and encounters as well? Right, so if all I would have to do is go to this health tab to see any specific information about um, any of her encounters, even urgent care reservations or any, any future appointments. And Nathan, do you mind flipping over to preferences as well? Sure. So within preferences, we can also capture off the chart information. So how does Caitlin wanna be engaged? Does she want to receive text messages, email, uh, phone calls, and we can delineate that for maybe she wants to receive a phone call uh, for an appointment reminder, but she likes to receive um, uh, health and wellness tips via email to help her manage her health, so we can capture that here. 
um, obviously a global opt-out to, to have that information as well. The other very interesting point, Nathan, that we have at the bottom is that we are able to capture when Caitlin actually wants to be scheduled. So when we think about those three pieces of functionality we had at the beginning, provide me efficient service was one of those. And what this does is it allows us to capture what appointment times actually work for Caitlin's schedule. So we essentially can flip on and off the morning, afternoon, and, and midday for every day of the week to say, these are the times that Caitlin has told us work for her and work around her schedule and her family schedule. And we'll see how that can come up uh, through our scheduling flow as well as we're working through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's told us that she's not a morning person, so most of the time we don't actually <laughs> schedule appointments with her at that time. That's, uh, that's very true, very true in real life. Um, perfect, and the, the last thing I wanna hit on here before we go to appointment scheduling as well, uh, help me manage my health, right, reminders. So Nathan, this is integrated with Marketing Cloud, correct, is what we're using to send out information through yep. reminders and interactions. So. Mm -hmm. When you think about um, not only Salesforce administrators, but potentially business end users being able to tailor recommendations and reminders that are presented to agents and or distributed to patients through Marketing Cloud, these are the types of things that we may want our patients and our agents to be aware of. So um, sign up for our patient portal, right? This is something we can remind them. Uh, it's flu season, make sure you go get your flu shot. So this is another way that we're uh, making sure that Caitlin feels like we're on her team and we're helping her manage her health. But Nathan, with all of that, I believe that Kaylin actually called, and we're really not having good handle time here because she's been waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she actually called to schedule an appointment. Correct. And this appointment was for, I believe, physical therapy, correct? That's correct. If I'm Kaylin, um, I had surgery a little while ago, and Nathan, my knee, Astro, my knee is hurting a lot. Oh, Astro went away. He had to transfer the call. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Um, but Essentially, at this point, we would actually ask Caitlin what she's coming in for. Um, this one is a knee, but you can obviously look up other things here. For instance, like a cough. At this point, what would come up is actually knowledge articles um, relative, are related to what we just searched for. Um, the key benefit here is call center agents might not necessarily know um, everything about every type of symptom, mm -hmm. but they could have something here that says, this could lead to much greater things and you wouldn't necessarily want to book an appointment for that, but mm -hmm. rather go to either um, like an ER or book an urgent care appointment instead. Yeah. But obviously for, for a knee and physical therapy, it's not gonna be as big of a deal here. So at this point, what we would wanna do is actually search for that type of appointment. Now, who here has scheduled an appointment in an EMR system before or seen someone do it? So a few of us. Um, one of the things that we've seen through our implementations that has led to efficiency gains is translating appointment types that are in Cerner. And I think Eric mentioned several examples where uh, various physicians have times that they wanna be scheduled, um, whether they do a physical in 30 minutes versus 45, and what is it different for a new patient versus an existing patient, and does it depend on how old they are, does it depend on the day of the week, which clinic are they actually at? There's a lot of things that go into when you can actually schedule an appointment with a doctor. And so um, what Nathan did is he actually, Nathan, if you go back to appointment search real quick, yep. um, what we put in was not an appointment type. It wasn't anything codified. It was layman's terms of what does Caitlin need? Mm -hmm. She needs physical therapy. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're presenting it to our call center agents. This is a way that as we experience turnover in the call center as well, we make it easier for contact center agents to come up to speed because they're not learning codes and appointment types, they're learning layman's terms. They put in what they need. Uh, Nathan was also able to search by location and, and all of those fun things as well. Yep. So at this point, Caitlin wants to be seen as soon as possible. So she's unfortunately gonna have to get a morning appointment, but <laughs> we'll live at this point. Um, we'll just have to enter her actual insurance, which we also have stored within Salesforce and any sort of notes um, right, <laughs> and at this point we'll actually save that and that will um, send over to our EMR and actually book that appointment for her with Dr. Emily Sassy. Okay. So one of the key points that we've actually seen, this is actually end-to-end -end integration. Um, no swivel chairs, no Epic, no Cerner. We actually did this in Salesforce, right? So 
um, kind of out of the possible of what Health Cloud can do, not just from a CRM standpoint, but just making it easier for your agents. That was kind of quick, mm -hmm. uh, quick and easy. We kind of showed the patient. Um, you, we knew who the patient is. We, uh, her, we knew who the patient was. Um, understand key points and literally go from end to end. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of great. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> So I think that ends a little bit of our demo, and hopefully that um, kind of sparks up some ideas of what you guys are kind of thinking, um, especially if what is possible of personalization in healthcare experience. Mm -hmm. um, really kind of give key takeaway is contextualize the ways in which healthcare can improve the patient experience, especially for Caitlin. Um, maybe even if, if, you're, if, if you're a caregiver, you're a parent, kind of make it a little bit easier for them. Um, we could review a basic health cloud architecture model it could be complex, mm -hmm. but we, at least you have a feel of what does that look like. Understand the, the different types of integrations. So you have multiple integrations. Use, use all of them if you have to. And then data management for people processing technology and the importance of it. Right. Yep. Um, so that ends our uh, session, but would love to hear questions and answers. If you guys have question, uh, questions, come up to the mic, and we'll answer them as best as we can. Use the um, to use their own portal that comes with like my chart or mm -hmm. Cerner's, or do they go through what you're providing through Health Cloud? It's a little bit both. So usually it's it's more of a skin. Um, it's a different platform. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll leverage a different platform. You might use AWS, um, Azure, or Azure, um, Heroku, and put in mobile, um, a portal. But in the back end, it's layering in that mm -hmm. skin from the data from my chart as well as from the CRM. Right. Okay. So you'll have, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a hybrid of, of all worlds. Yeah. And then for the schedule, how do you get that information is? Do you, in, do you have, <laughs> so that's the, a tricky one. That's the tricky one. So um, <clears throat> one, batch load, right? Depending on, sometimes we can't get them all, if all the scheduling ha is happening from urgent care and past appointments from different systems, we can get, uh, we can get them on a daily file, yep. right? Two, um, we could get them through an HL7 feed from scheduling, so that feeds into S Salesforce. Or three is kind of if you're initiating that appointment in Salesforce, it will send it out, and we also get the response back, and we can create the the, the, the data layer. And right. that's it's, through the Fire API. Yeah, it's through the Fire API. So it's, you. as you can see, the integration options: bulk, HL7, and Fire. <laughs> Hello. Um, hey. My name's Lindsay, I'm from Johns Hopkins. So we currently utilize Epic, and I had two questions for you. So one, um, the view that you showed where they are doing the appointment scheduling, mm -hmm. is that where a call center agent will go directly into Health Cloud, mm -hmm. or do you think that would work as well if the call center agents were putting um, information directly into Epic and then it could feed into Health Cloud? Um, it depends. Um, it, so. It all depends. Some, so one question is, if your if your scheduling process is simple, but provider's appointment type is never simple, right? Um, you might want to go to Epic, but then it, it it increases the average time of the handle time for the agent. So it might take a while, or um, so it's all it all, it all varies. So, but in reality, we yeah. you can do either or. Um, we also like. The, the conversation that we had with our clients and customers is we don't want to train um, the agents to be epic experts because they don't need to know that because it's really clinical and sometimes you get into a situation where you might be you might get into clinical data that you're not supposed to so you don't want agents to be looking at that so it's kind of se uh, separating those mm -hmm. um, conflicts of data and, okay. and I think one of the biggest things too that we've heard is is the swivel chairing between multiple systems. So the way that I would approach it is understand the functionality that your agents need. And if you can deliver that functionality within Health Cloud and the integrations that are available with Epic, uh, have your agents reside in one system. Yeah. It's a better agent experience. They don't need to have multiple systems up, typing things, copy pasting, all of that. They can really focus on, I have this information that is within one system. And all of my focus goes to being empathetic and, and treating the customer. Um, however, if there is functionality that is not currently available that you can't deliver in Health Cloud because of integration limitations, potentially that swivel chair is temporarily necessary. 
Okay. Um, and my second question is the view that you showed where it was uh, Caitlin's medical mm -hmm. record and mm -hmm. her patient card. Mm -hmm. So are all of those features out of the box standard from yep. Health Cloud or are they custom yep. objects? So those are the EHR data model. So that was kind of the great tools, right? So um, the Health Cloud has all the data models for you to make it easier. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is just integrate with your EMR and um, map the fields correctly. Right. Awesome. We made some modifications yeah. to UI, but for the most part, all of that's out of the box. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. One last question over here. So. Um, oh, sorry about that. I'm on the payer side, and we recently implemented yeah. um, a care management program mm -hmm. on Health Cloud. We've mm -hmm. integrated our HIE with Fire. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we found and kind of were challenged with, I saw Shield up there. So. Yeah. Do you have a methodology around when to choose or not? Because a lot of PHIs store in notes or yeah. call notes. Let's and talk afterwards. That's, okay, because that's huge, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, we ran into yeah. compute problems and. Oh yeah. Okay. So great. there's 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 like just kind of short. There's three platforms: the event monitoring, the platform encryption, and what's the last one? Um, field audit trail. Um, we do um, our team. We have another team on the side. They're part of our risk assurance team, and they're actually here on site this week. Um, they actually did a talk about security and Shield and PHI. So they actually did it Tuesday. So, But we could talk for after, so it'll be great. So. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank and you guys. Um, if you guys need to talk to us, we're here uh, um, today. So. Mm -hmm.